guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's episode of Fossil Friday, I'm going to be doing another level of prep to the Megalitoceros ammonite. So for those of you who have been following along, you would have seen that I've been slowly prepping this ammonite for the past few months, kind of from start to finish. And we're not quite at that finish line yet, but we're getting very, very close. So I've been removing the matrix recently. So I'll link all the previous episodes down below if you'd like to follow along with how it all started. But today, we're adding a layer of varnish to it. So I'm going to be using Paraloid B72, which is a high level um, kind of curation technique. So even museums use this. And it comes in the form of these like little plastic pellets. So I'm sure some of you will be familiar with it, others maybe not. So they're just like these little, they're just like little plastic nuggets really. And you dissolve them in acetone. Now the dissolving can take quite a while. So I tend to leave it overnight. So today I'll make the solution and then tomorrow we'll apply it to the fossil together. But um, I'm gonna make a very weak concentration because that's the beauty of Paraloid is you can make it as a very kind of light varnish. So you'll almost not even notice a difference but it just helps to like consolidate the surface ever so slightly. It just adds that you know, very small barrier between the fossil and the atmosphere. Um, so I just prefer doing it on most of my fossils unless I think they're really, really strong. Um, but you can also make the paraloid solution a lot like stronger. So you can use it as an adhesive, a con like a really strong consolidant. Um, so you can play around with it, you can layer it up. It's really versatile and the best thing about it it's reversible so say it goes wrong or it goes a bit bubbly we don't want any bubbles but you know say it goes on a bit thick or something like that you can take it off whereas some of the other glues that you can get or varnishes once they're on they're on and then over time they can yellow and it can be a bit of a nightmare so we like paraloid but i'll link down below the one i use if you would like to get the same um but this is the fossil we're going to be applying it to so it's quite a big boy or i actually i should say it's a big girl because that's my favorite fact about ammonites is the females were quite a lot larger which is just it's just such a great fact that um so yeah this is what it looks like i will bring you guys closer in a second so you can see it close up before i put the varnish on it's always a little bit scary but if you're concerned about your fossil add a little bit of water to it first and you'll get an idea of what it's going to look like with a slight shine to it. Um, so that's what I tend to do if I'm worried it's not going to suit a fossil, I'll just wet it first. So maybe we'll do that in a second and we'll see what my Megalitoceros is going to look like with a bit of gloss on it. But um, I think it will just add, yeah, just a nice level of protection. So I'm going to bring you guys closer so you can look at the ammonite in more detail and then we'll make the solution and go from there. But this is what it looks like up close so you can see I've removed all the excess matrix from the center and honestly it looks fabulous as it is and I don't really want to affect how it looks right now I just want to add a very slight coating to the surface just to protect it almost because it is a little bit you know of a kind of sandy one it's, it's not soft at all and I'm, I'm not worried about it you know getting ruined over time or weathered because it's going to go inside but I just think a nice very very thin coat will just help preserve it that's just my personal opinion but this is what it looks like as it is I'm going to put a thin I'm just going to put a little bit of water on it now with a paintbrush so we can see what it will kind of look like with a bit of paraloid so let's have a look that's where it looks like absolutely horrific see it just like almost darkens it so I don't really want it to get a gloss I, I kind of want it to still be matte. I just want it to have, yeah, just another layer of protection. So this is what it will kind of look like. It's a bit hard to get the idea of it because if I was trying to paint, you know, if I wet the whole thing, it would be drying before, you know, the whole thing would have the water on it. But So it, it does make it a little bit darker. So I think it's going to work. Let's put some up here. And the varnish wouldn't be like this. Like this would be quite a strong coat of paraloid, I think. So it would be a little bit more subtle, I think. But this is what it would kind of look like. So I really recommend, you know, if you're unsure on putting paraloid on something, just wet it first. It does, act like, um, chances are it won't hurt the fossil at all. And it will just give you an idea of what it's gonna look like as kind of the final, the finished product. So we can, Take a look. So I think that's going to look quite cool. It's really hard to like judge it, but it brings out the colours really nicely. I'm worried now because I'm going to put this video out and you know, you guys are going to be watching it from start to finish. And if any of you don't like the Paraloid, it's going to be, it's going to be a sad occasion watching me put it on. But the thing with Paraloid, it's reversible. So 
I think I'm going to go for it. I just think, look, look at how much more detail you can see. It almost like, it really does bring out the detail of a rock. It's actually a field technique. So as geologists, when we're in the field, you put water on the surface to bring out the luster of the minerals to actually bring out the colors in the rock. So that's why I like paraloid because I don't think it takes away from the fossil. I think it just enhances it. So I'm going to go for it. We're going to go for it. So let's make the paraloid. <laughs> Okay, so to make a paraloid solution, you don't want to, like, the acetone eats through plastic. Like, that's what's happening. It's dissolving those plastic kind of nuggets. So you need a glass jar. So I just save any glass jars that are around the house. So you've got, like, old, you know, old jam jars are great. So if you want to make smaller amounts or, like, look out for larger ones as well. Um, now, they, they do die quite quickly, I also find, because if they've got any rubber seals or anything like that, again, the acetone's going to eat through it eventually and... So you, you kind of, you just need them on like a conveyor belt of options really because the acetone evaporates if they're not sealed. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a fun game trying to find containers for the acetone and the paraloid. Um, so I might, I could use this big one. I've just got to be careful with the seal on the lid. So I'm just trying to think how much acetone I need to make for a fossil of this size. I've never, you know, put this much paraloid on anything before. So this is a learning curve for me as well. So I think I am actually going to use this kind of in the middle jar. So I'm going to probably fill it up just over halfway. And then if, say, I run out of paraloid, it'll just be another day. We'll make another batch and we'll do it that way. I think um, it's better. So I'm just going to want to make sure it's as clean as possible. Because that's why I'm making a fresh batch. Because I haven't, like, a jar of just old paraloid but when it's this this kind of important of a fossil I, I don't want to get any like dust in it or any previous rock crumb I want it to be perfect so I'm just going to brush out any like crumbs that were left in here it looks fairly good to me okay the jar so then there's I don't really use any science to this like there is ways you can measure it and do like one part this and five parts that I literally just put a handful in and I just kind of judge it with my eye um, so I'm just going to put a nice layer in the base now there are also ways of doing this a little bit better where you suspend the paraloid like the plastic nuggets and then it kind of like dissolves equally into the acetone because doing it my way you can't really mix it very well so you do get higher like uh, the top part is the weakest part of the solution and then the bottom half is almost like a glue um, so you just have to work with it but once you play around with it you're you get to understand the paraloid if that makes sense you know what you're working with so that's kind of where I'm at so I'm just gonna do a thin literally like I've just filled like a little bit in the base there um, and then I'm gonna fill the rest up with some acetone so again, working with chemicals, make sure you're in a well-ventilated space or outside um, because you don't want to be hurting yourself to play with fossils. There's no fun in that. So I'm going to film it, fill it up just over halfway. Like that. And that is literally job done. So now we just let it sit. So I'll put the lid on. Um, don't shake it or anything like that. Just let it sit. And then um, kind of in the morning, I'll... Um, the lid's not going on there one second in the morning i'll just give it like a little almost like a swirl so you let it kind of do its thing once it's dissolved so probably could have got a fresher jar actually i didn't clean this one very well so let's put that on so that's how much i'm going to be making so you can see all the nuggets in the base there and the rest is acetone so we'll let this dissolve and it's just going to be a very weak you know, very thin layer, um, just to kind of give it just a very subtle, subtle shine, just to bring out the colours a little bit. Because I actually, I really liked it. Once I put the water on it, I was like, wow, this fossil has changed colour completely. So I'm now going to let that sit overnight, and I'll be back in the morning, and we can put it on the fossil. So it's the next morning, and we are ready to paint the paraloid onto the fossil. So it dissolved overnight, so you can see the solution here. Um, so if you look really closely, you can kind of see that there's something dissolved in the acetone, but I'm not sure it'll pick up on camera. But um, yeah, you just want to, before you use the paraloid, just make sure that the solution has all dissolved. I'm not quite sure how many hours it takes, but normally if you make it the day before, you'll wake up to the solution ready. So that's just kind of the method I use. Um, so yeah, I'll move you guys closer and we can start the process. 
So we are ready to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush the whole surface of the fossil, making sure there's no bits of dust or anything that could have fallen on it because it is just such a big surface. So I just want to make sure there's absolutely nothing that's going to like get stuck into the paranoid. I want it to be a completely perfect surface. And then I've got a few paint brushes. So these are brand new ones. I've got a few sizes. I think I'm gonna go for like the middle size first. I do have a bigger one in case I wanna get bigger brush strokes, but I think potentially doing it like in smaller stages will be better. So I'm trying to decide where to start. <laughs> I think I just have to do it. So this is what it looks like post paraloid and it's just, it's just stunning. It's, it's not shiny at all, it's just added just another kind of, I, I can't even explain it, it's just brought out the colours a little bit so it almost looks like I've done absolutely nothing to it but you guys would have seen initially how like dull it looked com in comparison to this. So I just really like it and I've left the underside of it still normal. Um, just so I kind of have the best of both worlds. But look at that. I am so chuffed with it. I absolutely love it. So that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. So the prep is pretty much done now with this one. So there'll be a video coming out later on in the year once I get the custom stand for it. Um, and then that's it. I'm so happy with how it's turned out. I'm really chuffed how the paraloid looks. I was a little bit nervous putting it on just because it was so beautiful before, but I think it's just, it's really brought out the detail a little bit and I just, I'm obsessed with it. I'm glad it's not shiny. I actually don't think it would suit being shiny. I think it needs to still be matte, um, but it's just almost brought out yeah, just the browns and the oranges a bit and I'm just obsessed with it. Absolutely love it. But um, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more. I do have an Instagram and a Twitter which is linked down below if you'd like to follow me on there as well. Um, but yeah, look after yourselves and hopefully I'll see you next week.